my brother was on was a, uh, on the faculty at the University of Toledo in the law school, and for a while he served on the admissions board for the law school. And his problem, he had to finally resign on that committee because he said we we really want to get some black lawyers. Black lawyers are really needed. The problem is we have all these applications, and there's so many more qualified white applicants than black applicants. We're actually doing reverse discrimination against the white the white applicants to get it to get enough you know black people to make a difference. And so he was really struggling. I had actually written a, a bit on this subject, and so I've studied it. And and for me. It's all how you define qualified. Because in law schools, for example, which is where your example comes from, we have a tendency to define qualified strictly in terms of two measures. One is your score on, on an admissions test, and the other is your undergraduate grad GPA, your grade, grade point average. Well. We know beyond a doubt that standardized admissions tests, whether it's the law school admissions test or the ACT or the SAT, are discriminatory in the sense that far more minority students that take those exams haven't had the same kinds of educational opportunities that non-minority students do. And, and the court has recognized the fact that even, you know, what are we, 50 some years after Brown versus Board of Education, that our school system is around the country, particularly in urban areas, is as, as segregated as it was then uh, because of housing patterns. And, and so my sort of goal in life, in some sense, in the law school world has been to try to convince people that if you know your admission standards discriminate, why do you continue to use those measures of what it means to be qualified? Those admissions tests are designed not to gauge how you're going to be as a professional. They're not even, gauge, they're not even designed to gauge how you're going to do in law school. There's only one thing those things are designed for, and that is to predict how you will do in your first year of law school. And all of the experts have testified in the Michigan case that the correlation between those tests and uh, success are somewhere in the 16% range. That's not a very high correlation. So that means 84% of what goes into success has nothing whatsoever to do with a darn test score. So I'm hoping, and, and some of the more enlightened schools, and I view them that way around the country, are abandoning the SAT and the ACT as admissions requirements. We also should note that those tests back in the 40s and so on, a lot of those were designed for discriminatory purposes to keep Jews out of higher education because the Jewish people in those days were not doing well on those tests. And uh, uh, so the, the use of standardized testing has a pretty sordid history, actually. But we can persist. We persist in using it. Very great. So thank you very much for coming.